All right, everybody, welcome back. The Bounty Hunters rides again. We were supposed to be on four, three, two, and one week ago, but the guy sitting over there, well, I guess on the other <laughs> side of the screen, he decided, I don't want to do it that often, and then he decided to get sick, and then he decided to get yeah. sick again. Then he decided to celebrate Christmas and decided to celebrate New Year's. It was all selfish. Every bit of it was yeah. selfish. So we I thought... Just I just didn't want to hit number 100. I just wanted to leave <laughs> at 99. So we're sitting there thinking, how do you come off the high that is a Star <laughs> Wars Christmas special? What do you do? How do you level that <laughs> off? And we decided to tackle one of the big ones. We've been putting it off for like two years. Now, how long have we been doing this show? <laughs> uh, I think three years. Yeah. Uh, we've I been putting we, it off. And we, and we covered our, our first. Oh, so the earliest characters we covered were uh, based on the title of the show, Bounty Hunters. We covered the Empire Strikes Back Bounty Hunters. And then other ones, uh, infamously leaving out one guy because we, uh, we weren't prepared to do a, a big character. <laughs> and well, we, we are now. But we're all not going to make you sit here and watch five hours <laughs> of the full story. <laughs> that is the Booba Fett. So what we're going to do, we're going to break it into three parts. Is that what we agreed to? I believe three parts. Yeah, three parts. Uh, one based on his time uh, as an adolescent with Django during the Clone Wars up until his duel with Cad Bane. Uh, another one uh, we based his during the Galactic Empire, his time uh, working as a bounty hunter. Uh, all the different st storylines involved with that. And then finally, we'll do one post-Empire, which will go over Called comparing his legends and canon aspects specifically, because uh, there's, uh, there's some big differences going on there. <laughs> we call that one endearingly all the love. We call that the diaper years. That's the one we like to call. Hey, the back to uh, the back <laughs> to years. Um, <laughs> so, yes. Usually I ask, but I, I think we already said it today. We are covering him for the next three. So if you want to know about the Boba Fett, you have to sub up so you can catch all three episodes that we are doing. We're doing the young Boba Fett, kind of like the young Sheldon from uh, Big Bang Theory. Today is the young <laughs> Boba Fett. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, and it's funny because how we should have done this was do like Django Fett last week. And do the young Boba Fett today, but we did Django uh, Fett. We didn't like, do Django Fett like three years uh, ago, like all like <laughs> eighty episodes ago because we didn't want to do Boba Fett. We did Django. <laughs> all right, so let's jump in. Oh, I lost my little notes here. Let's jump in to Boba Fett, mm -hmm. the young version. I got two versions on the screen for you. One is the Clone yep. Wars version, and one is the movie version. Uh, the, I yeah. thought that kid did a pretty good job in the movie, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, you know what's funny? There's uh, so Daniel Logan plays him, and uh, actually both he voices the animated one. Uh, he that. when there's pictures of him, uh, the casting of him there, and it shows what um, Tamora Morrison looked like as a kid because Tamora Morrison was in a movie in the '70s as a child, and they have the exact same haircut, and he looks just like him. That's hilarious. hilarious. They did it on purpose, or was that like an accident? One hundred percent. That's what they based it off of. I'm sure. Oh, uh, okay. Because I've been like, but, that's um, a crazy yeah. coincidence. So, yeah, uh, Young Boba Fett. All right. So it all starts. Uh, it actually started with the, and I forgot. Test tube. test tube. But what was the that? What was that <laughs> video game that Django was in? <clears throat> was it like Django Fat? Like what was it? Oh, uh, if you look down on the bottom of the screen. It'll be the hint. It was called the Bounty Hunters. It's called Bounty Hunter. Yeah. Okay. So the the video game the I, wow, I thought it was called something else. That's weird. Okay. So the the video game <laughs> Bounty Hunter they actually have a moment where Django Fat is doing a bounty and he meets up with Count Dooku. Um, yeah, and Count Dooku tells him, you know, the whole point of this basically was we want to clone you. We want to make an army of you, and that is the time in the you know in the video game, and obviously it was also canon. That he said, that's fine, but my payment is I get an unaltered, unaged, un everything clone that I get for myself that I'm I'm gonna be the daddy of. I am daddy. And literally, I mean, although he was a clone, they did treat each other like that. It was his son, and that was his dad. And uh and that they agreed to that. And test tube later, 
the long neck people said, here you go. Here is your son. And he will now from this point forward be known as Boba Fett. Boba Fett Alpha. He is the first clone as well. He is Alpha. Uh, <laughs> uh, he had kind of a weird childhood. Obviously, he grew up on the mean streets Camino. of Camino. Uh, <laughs> mean, mean the high seas. The high seas of Camino. So the mean laboratory <laughs> settings of Camino. He didn't have a lot of friends. Uh, he really didn't do anything. He just kind of was able to come and go as he pleased. Yeah. He kind of trained himself. He got to have all the, you know, all the training he wanted to have, but it was up to him whether he did it or not. Obviously, I, I would have met. I wonder what the day to day life was like for uh, Jingle comes home and does he get the old daddy and he puts a big arm around him or does he say daddy and he slaps him and yeah. says, no, <laughs> no dad's here. <laughs> I just wonder how, how they treated each other. Oh, when we look at the comics, you'll see, actually, yeah, basically, it's that first one. Like, Dad, you're home, kind of jumps in his arms uh, thing. But yeah, I thought, no, that. I uh, thought it was really yeah. weird. Really weird how, yeah, just day to day life, just being there. Like, you know, uh, did, did who was the wet nurse? One of the was one of the. the Let's people? not talk about that. Like, it the, was like, just a. It was it was blue milk mixed with some vitamins, I'm sure, is, is what, <laughs> what, what sustained him. <laughs> sustained him. Um, um, well, Oh, go ahead. There was no mention of why he named him Boba, though, ever. No, was no, there? He so. didn't name him after anyone. He didn't name him after Jaster or any of the other people like, in his life. Just Boba. I guess it was a family name. We'll never know. I'm sure they're going to tell us at some point, probably. But as of right now, we don't yeah. know. Um, so, th- yeah, that was his life. He grew up. Uh, he, w- he didn't grow up with any other clones or anything. They weren't his friends, which is him and his dad. Yeah, um, which is funny. He never associated with the other clones. He didn't like. He didn't like them. He really didn't because no. he kind of he saw them as, um, what's that word? Inferior to himself. And they kind of followed. They kind of that 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 kind of went along. You know, you would see that pop up again where he would wouldn't like them, and you, it was kind of funny mm-hmm. that he didn't like them. Uh, technically, according to Star Wars, he does have a sibling. We're not going to mention his sibling, but he does have a sibling that we're not going to mention. Sister. Uh, he has a sister. Sister. <laughs> he has a sister named Omega. I would think that uh, Jango would be very surprised to hear that if he had that his his way. Um. So yeah, then the first time we kind of see him is uh, we see him in the Star Wars the movies. We see him yep. when the greatest entity to ever live. Obi Wan Kenobi finds that hidden planet. Oh, it seems there's Mister Master Kenobi has lost a planet, and he figures it out. He shows up there, follows him there, and that's the first time that the gentleman up there, live action, we see him come up there. Yeah, Dad, there's some the cops are here, yep. Dad. The police are here. Lock the door. The cops are here. <laughs> what's, the, what's the first? What's the first word you hear? It's like uh, Boba Fett is your father. On the first word we hear from Boba Fett is "Yep." Yeah. <laughs> Can we see him? Sure. <laughs> gives, him, gives him weird look like this and uh uh out of out of universe that, that moment's funny because uh he gave like a weird face like a look at kenobi up and down and apparently there's a couple takes and uh what you mcgregor said to him was like uh oh uh just pretend like like you like to give off the acting thing for that moment's like pretend like i i, I, yeah, I did it like a silent fart but you didn't know I did. You weren't sure if it was me or not. So you're just like, really look at him, you're thinking <laughs> about awesome. it. And then he goes, oh, okay. And then he farted. And they proceeded to fart right, right after saying that. So then he adds to the... <laughs> Only a British person would do something like that. That's perfect yeah. British humor right there. Um, <laughs> so... And then, uh, yeah, we meet, we meet he's alongside Django, his father. Um, they make their escape, and then we see him again, pretty much, right? Um, well, what's funny is that he, he he drives the ship. We, we know he owns a pilot ship, and uh, spin it. Excuse me. <laughs> I would think honestly, just for what Django does for a living, that would probably be one of the first things you teach your yes. child. Like if I was a uh, if I was a gangster in the '30s and I robbed banks, the, as soon as my child could touch the gas pedals, I'm like, "Here, Dad's going to show you something." In this case, I got to be like, "Go." go go and i'm hopping in the back seat as you floor it which is basically what happened <laughs> wow. um and the next time we see him i'm assuming is where uh a certain purple wielding gentleman uh dispatched of his dad and it said yeah, I mean, 
Uh, it set us on the course of what we know as Boba Fett, I would assume. Uh, that that fast forwarded his education. Yeah, uh leading, yeah, he's seen his dad get decapitated on the battlefield. Um, which is which is great, you know. Uh see, and also for what for a lot of people, the mis- misconception, we did pick up the helmet. The head was not inside the helmet. He was not picking up his dad's severed head in the helmet. The head flies out of the helmet in the shadow of the shot. You see. He's just picking the helmet up. Still, Presumably, though, though, he did go over and pick the head up, though. It's how to get the body, right? So, <laughs> still, though, like, I, I mean, I mean, it's a clean cut. It is. It's a lightsaber, but there was no goo left in that helmet. There was no like splatter. It was also, just, uh, uh, you know, that we had to take the armor off the body for later. The uh, he did have to get to the the other end of the head. So, <laughs> um, um, he had a he had a well, you know, a healthy dislike of uh of the Jedi, but in one gentleman in particular and technically Windu. <laughs> yeah, technically Windu. And it uh the other the other bounty hunters who are so awesome and loving, they decided to take them under their wing and uh and not use him in any kind of way, not use that hatred for their own gain. They just thought the best for him. Uh <laughs> and who did he um who did he get trained up with? Hook up with? Yeah. Uh, basically, Laura Singh led led him mostly as like the primary caregiver, uh, and then Bosk was like a second. Um, later on, there'd be others that would come and go, like Emko, uh, the the one with the giant hat and the dog. Uh, this kind of brutish guy, I can't remember his name. He's just there briefly, and then you had um, Dengar was there for a minute too. Dengar was there for a minute too. Yeah, um, a lot of, like the revolving cast, right? Yeah. And um. Anytime they wanted to show a, a bounty hunter, they would throw bounty him in there for a second. Because Ventress was there for uh, a hot minute as well. Yeah, she was in one of those. T- so he has about so leaving leaving episode two and that stuff. Obviously, we'll talk about more of that stuff in the comics. Uh, but it's time before Clone Wars. But in the Clone Wars, he has about two different arcs uh, of importance. There's the initial one, which is him basically on the uh, on one of the sh- the Venator masquerading with the cl- the clone kids uh to assassinate Windu which is a great episode and art and then after that he goes on to with the team and work with them doing different stuff uh assassinations and all whatnot but the other one is he shaves his head and he do- and he dons his new armor it's kind of closer to how he how he, the best car looks because he doesn't wear any of that armor because he can't fit Fit the armor, obviously. No, yeah. Um, but the weird thing is, uh, bringing it up is he blows the helmet up, which is weird because he blows the helmet up and it explodes, and they they analyze it and they confirm it's Beskar. But the thing is, does his dad have two helmets lying around? I assume so. Or that's weird, right? Yeah, and couldn't you just scraped off some of the metal? Like you had to blow it up, but you couldn't just like chipped it or something because it dents obviously like you couldn't come up with a different way to get some material to uh, see what it was but um oh, no, no. Boba blows the helmet up to try and kill Windu remember yeah um yeah, oh that's so, right he uh, did yeah. blow it up to try to kill Windu I forgot about that and that's when they which is weird they figured out. Like, yeah. What? yeah so anyways then you have the uh yes he has his new armor so he works with Ventress on this train heist uh, that's, that's, the, train that's heist. the that's the that's the uh story arc in the episode that's probably the most well known because that's a pretty good everybody's involved in that one pretty much it's a who's who of uh, people are involved Ventress is obviously involved in the the crim- criminals. and then at some point uh, I just wanted to mention here in case we forget he did uh, print himself to his father's infamous protege Cad Bane which will come back obviously in later dates and a few times one, one off the screen as you were going to say that we were talking about before we came on a, 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 a never, never realized episode, but they did canonize it later on. Yeah. So we had, um, yeah, the big event for uh, the end. I would say the end of his youth, pretty much, and going into like later stuff. We'll talk about. Do you want to bring that up now? Because I'm not sure what else there is to talk. Yeah, we can about. just bring it up now. That's fine. We get to say it right yeah. here, probably. So um, go ahead. There was a. There was obviously near the end of the Clone Wars. There was a bunch of storylines that were scrapped. Uh, they didn't get the finish and whatnot. Uh, one of them was a Boba Fett uh, centered arc, and it was going to feature him and Cad Bane 
coming to odds and they're going to have a duel and this duel they did the pre-animation for it you could watch it online still uh and but was wearing his the helmet and it's all all painted out and everything and they draw blasters, shoot, and what happens is Boba takes the dent in the helmet from Cad Bane, surviving, being knocked out, and Cad Bane takes the blaster to the head, and hat flies off, and he presumably dies. But then what they did was, later on revealed for, um, for Bad Batch, he has this plate on, the he- on his head where the blaster was, canonizing that event, and then later being brought up with Book of Boba Fett. But yeah. that is how Boba Fett gets his dent is from Cad Bane, which I think is actually a good a good way of doing it. Yeah, it's funny. If you wanted to bring up that infamous that famous dent in the helmet, how who dented that Beskar helmet? Cad still Bane bummed, is a good choice. Still bummed his show didn't focus on this upbringing instead of <laughs> sporting desert bugs. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't want to always do this every time we have a spotlight, but. There is a big, obviously glaring opportunity to make something. Um, I, I probably have to be a cartoon at this point because everyone's getting old. But um, <laughs> of how what Django did to train him, and I feel like that could definitely be um, a little, you know, six six episode story arc of his growing up from toddler style all the way up to, you know, the last scene of the last thing could be the doors opening up and seeing uh, Kenobi standing there. Like, I, I think that would be an awesome, I think a lot of people would want to watch it. <sighs> Star Wars would fumble the ball. Let's be honest, but hopefully they wouldn't, yeah. but that could be, uh, that could be an awesome, awesome thing. Well, if they do, uh, if you know what, it, it, it's sad because they have the tales of the Jedi series, which is great. Uh, and then they're doing more of so like we'll see we'll see how that turns out. And there was ideas of a Tales of the Sith series. I mean, look at the original tales, the tales of the bounty hunters, right? And have yeah. you can have different like what a great anthology. Just you don't need one one off episodes about different characters, right? You know. Uh is there any more that you were gonna add to the youth part of him? I'm trying to see um, my notes here. I think we kind of hit most stuff I had put down. A lot of it's pretty. Oh, <laughs> he shows back he up back. again. <laughs> I'm, there's a lot. There's a lot happening. So, no, you're I good. apologize for my absence. We were if just. If it happens waiting. again, just know I'm thinking of you, and I'm thinking <laughs> of Boba Fett. Uh, that's Maybe what we, we were saying. <laughs> we would have just went on without you, like right from the beginning. But this is uh, this is the famous. Love love affair of the Kachung with the Boba Fett, so we had to uh, wait as long as we could. Yep. Um, yeah, so is there anything oh, else you sorry. wanted to add to the young part of the Boba Fett story? Myself, no. Um, I will leave it to Kachun then. Is there any of your favorite moments, obviously, about his history from being a kid up until his duel with, his unseen duel with uh, Cad no, I, I don't know. I, I think there's some... Um untold stories of Boba Fett as a child and how he grew up in that facility. I mean, what a life, right? <laughs> We're talking about that actually. That yeah. like what do you what do you do with the day was the day in, day out of that living there, right? Walking around. Yeah. Just- and well, like the clone the clones are all obviously already grown up. Yeah. He hates them. Yeah, they don't like you don't want to do with them. That's what I was gonna say. Do um, they all grow up together or do they all I mean, is there a story behind the clones? Was he, last, they- was he last pick at the uh, at the yeah. sports game? Did he walk by the big window we could watch him, and then they both gave each other the finger as they went by? Like there goes that little idiot. They're giving each other the finger. He goes by. He's not one of us. Oh, look at those idiots down there. I'm not one of them. Like I, I'd like to see that. But yeah, I mean, now that you say that, I was talking about from like birth to we meet them but yeah like all of that honestly right because like right here like we're stopping right here as far as young go and then the next time we're going to come he's full-on infamous best bounty hunter that ever existed ever lived guy and then we don't even have that little moment we don't have we don't have a broody teenager like we don't have a young man (laughs) out on the (laughs) we don't have a guy who hit the streets he's for the streets we don't even have that guy. So like there is so much. And it's surprising, mm-hmm. don't you think? That there's they've left so much there to be untold so far? Cuz you yeah. would think they would jump on that quick. 
Like, obviously, there's book smarts. They have the book of Boba Fett. Where does he get his book smarts from? He's got street smarts, but from the streets of where? It's underwater. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Well, what's funny is we don't ever see we don't ever see the transition point to when he actually goes and dons his father's armor and repaints it and adds all the yeah. details. We just see him wearing his, his get together and just the helmet, and then uh, switches over. Yeah, and it, yeah, and it's weird that we don't because, like I said, it's that's money to be made right there. There's no reason why we're not seeing that to be. Well, honest. maybe he just sits in a room for twelve years <laughs> with a helmet in his hand, just. <laughs> freaking out about his dad's head yeah well hey so i brought that up earlier a misconception where he uh he when he was there his dad he, he picked the helmet up his head was not in the helmet his head flew out of the helmet in the air and you see the shadow of it but i said the thing was though he did probably have to go pick it up because the bury him or whatever and when he stripped the armor off of him obviously the neck and everything was still you know that's something that daddy lucas did somebody told him is he looking at the head and he was like no why would you think that he goes, okay, back to the editing board. And then he was like, we're going to draw a little shadow going across here just to make sure people know that his head wasn't there. We don't need that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but what was I say was the, uh, um, oh, I just left me. The, um, oh, God, it just left me. Talking about his head flying out. This just got me distracted. Um. <laughs> <clears throat> Welp, we can we can go on the slides until you get your uh, your undistractedness back. I guess. Are you ready? <laughs> are you ready for the the slides? <clears throat> oh yeah. We you got ourselves shrink us a little on the left. Uh, yeah, we'll see what happens when we get to that point. Um, because that this has been the same, so I just think you just made this a little too big. I think it's a it's a COVID oh, yeah, error. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what does that say right there? Right next to 100. The Bounty Hunters episode 100. Episode Boba Fett, the Galactic 100. Republic era. 100. 100. All we right. Did it. We did it. We can retire now. We did it, <laughs> Ma. We did it. <laughs> the character spotlight. Uh, so, regarding movie and TV, episode 2, Attack of the Clones, would be his first appearance. Uh, Clone Wars against he was in Death Trap. R2 come home and Lethal Track down as the three-episode arc where he does the... Uh, uh, Mace Windu assassination and all that stuff, which is great. Um, Deception he pops up into, and then Bounty is the one with Asajj Ventress on the train. Mm. A great storyline. Um, again, he uh, the, his, the duel Cad Bane was a cancelled episode. They never got to do. Shame they never got finished. But Book of Boba Fett, uh, we actually see him as a young kid in the flashbacks in episode one and two, which is new, and that is like generated footage, I guess, like it's CGI or like the deep fake or whatever, where it shows his like it shows him running on Camino and the reflection, uh, as well as uh, from um, Genosis, but a different angle, like the like the uh, aerial view opposed to um, next to him. And then I guess Kachung had to do something, but you can see the helmet there. He gave us the opportunity to see the helmet we were talking about. <laughs> uh, okay, comic appearances. Yep, so comics, we got his first appearance actually, as young, young Boba Fett is actually in Django Fett, uh, the one shot. Uh, it predates the Attack of the Clones uh, adaptation, uh, as well as the Zam Wessel uh, also predates it as well. He shows up in two, three, four. And then there's actually two other issues he shows up as a young uh, adolescent, which is called Blood Ties 1 and 2. That one's technically called the Blood Ties Django and Boba Fett, but the that was the first one they did, so it was still by Blood Ties. Um, Canon-wise, he only has one comic appearance, and it is, again, Django Fett. You can get a trend here while, where we see a young version of him all the time. Uh, and then he actually has only one cover appearance in the young form, and that is on Dr. Afro 13, the Lucasfilm 50th anniversary variant. Is this the said episode, uh, comic book you're speaking of? <clears throat> yes, the Django Fett one. <laughs> I actually don't uh, have that one, and it bothers me that I don't I, have it. 
I found I found it myself and it is great. I love the art inside of it. It's like this watercolory thing. Uh, I also want to point out the fact that he has a figure of his dad toy. Yeah, he's got figures, man. Got, this is I need figure, this comic and book. Battle droids too. Uh, and, who's and making they're... these? And he's shooting the battle droids. That's a that's interesting. Um, no, who's making these? Who's making these toys? Can, I don't Kamenoan? know. But can you find them on like eBay or something? Like how far? How was the shipping like from the Kaminoans to? Uh... Shipping like. <laughs> <laughs> don't exist. You actually have to uh, pick, pick up. Pick up only. <laughs> but, I mean, they have stands. Does that mean they don't stand up on their own? Because if they don't stand up on their own, I'm sorry, they're not an action figure. That's a statue. So, oh, the tabletop. That's just for Dungeons yeah, and Dragons. It's tabletops. Yeah, that's unfortunate. For Dubax, this is for Dubax and uh, and. <laughs> there it is. See, See I don't have this the, comic. Uh, that's why I didn't know about the daddy. And he jumps in his arms because I don't have this. That's why he, he asked does about do that. It. And I'm like, oh, well, yeah, he does. Daddy, you're home. Gives him a hug and he's like, Oh, he's like, I have to go again, go back for mission. He said, like, Do you have to go? And he's like, I understand. He's like, but we can hang out a little longer. And I bought him right panel them playing together with the toys and the helmet mm-hmm. there. Very sweet. Can we just talk about this daddy one right here? Can we just talk about that? Because that is a hobbit. That is not <laughs> that is not a Mandalorian. That is a hobbit. I see, I know a hobbit when I see one, and these three panels right here, they're <laughs> hobbits. So that's interesting. He heard it before right here. Mr. Grell on YouTube. First ever. We figured it all out. They're actually hobbits, at least when they're young. That's why they're foundlings. <laughs> that's why they're foundlings. And this is the this is the Zam Wessel uh one shot as well. Speaking of somebody I thought should have been a little bit bigger in their in the in the world of Star Wars. Oh Sam Wessel should have been could have hmm. been way cooler. More backstory again in our character. We've covered before as well this character. Um, if you want to look more into it. Elf um, hoodie? Is that not the hoodie that the uh, the elf queen gave them? Oh the right my murder? god. It's all here, this people. Is, uh, you're right. The <laughs> Council of Elrond themselves met on Camino. This is actually where it was. Uh, so yeah, so Zam Wessel meets uh, Bo is playing with his ball on the platform, which confirms that he no, he does not play sports with the other clones. He does not like no. them. He plays by himself. He really um, play. He really play ball by himself. That's my ball. Don't touch my ball. This is my. What ball. happens if he kicks it into the water? Just gone, right? It's it like it's one. like holy god. Yeah. Um. Yes, yeah, so he meets he meets Zam for the first time there, and uh, he introduces his son and all that and such. Can we talk about the fact what what's what's his hat we got going on here? Is this the anti rain hat? Does this keep the rain out of your face? What yeah. what is this? It looks like a cobra or something on top of his head. That's interesting looking. Mm-hmm. I also think that she could be because she's a shapeshifter, correct? Yep. She could Changeling. be any. She could be anything she wants, and she decided to be a long-legged, good-looking uh, bounty hunter. Of course. <laughs> of course. He looks Style, like he cobra. He does. Hail cobra! cobra. <laughs> All right. Look, um, here one. we go. Now we're the adaptation issue two. Uh, he's I up in the corner there. there. Yep. Who's the guy on the cover holding this lightsaber in the middle? Who's this fella? Uh, Jesus. Because I, I think I know who they think it is, but that dude's aged about 30 years, so I don't know who that's supposed to be, but... Sun-dried. Got a, Sun-dried yeah, he got out of them, Dan, got them Dantooine sons or something and got aged real fast for that cover. Oh, man. So this is this is the movie, right? This is definitely the comic this book. This is the movie adaptation, movie. yep. Dark Horse, uh, ignore the Marvel in the corner for love that Dark Horse. Uh, so we got uh, issue three. So this is the uh, them blowing up, um, blowing up uh, who they thought was Kenobi, but it was actually some drunk. And it was the, the uh, is, was, it, was it the famous bong, yep. uh, wow. the greatest sound ever made in Star Wars history? Is this right here? Is this Anakin going? I killed them all, the women and yep. the children. He's like talking through his yep. teeth. <laughs> it's, it's great and it's the greatest. I acting. can see it. I can see it. In my, my my mind. And oh. then issue four, the battle, uh, and the battle. They just show off the uh, yeah, the moment right there. Yeah, that's head on he- the helmet. And and the head is like over here somewhere because it shot off. So yeah, don't worry. Off, just off camera. Just off camera. <laughs> Blood ties. 
So Buenta is interesting. So this is the art's kind of like a photo real one. But it not. is interesting. It is kind of. So um, this is a great moment. So both fits in this. Uh, he's in a cave with Django, and he goes like, "Oh, I'll give him the jetpack." And he's like, uh, "Why do you want to? Why? What are we doing here?" Right? Big roar is heard. It was my training, Dad. And uh, this kind of reminds me. This cover. Um, you might not be young enough for this, but or old enough for this. But like in the two thousands, possibly a lot of the cartoons. They went to like real 3D and it looked weird. They did that for like a few years. That's just kind of reminds me of is that weird like 3D animation that a lot of the cartoons kind of went to like like uh, Beast Wars and all those all those cartoons. They kind of did that weird. Oh, that's I kind remember, of that I remember of. that. That's why I grew up at the 3D yeah, era. That's kind of that's kind of that's what that reminds me of a little bit. That cover. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a sweet monster though. So, yeah, that giant monster on the left. That's what they see, and then Django's like, "Bring me a tooth," <laughs> and then oh, that's awesome. Well, we'll has to go flying around the cave. What is this? And eventually family does, ties? huh? You said this is family ties, or what did you say? This this, this uh, blood ties. Blood I don't ties. have this one either. What the hell? What kind of a comic it's book four, collector am it's I? Four issue uh, series. Is one's half and half, like it's half Boba, half Django. Um, well, half adult Boba, half adult Django. Um. And yeah, he does eventually get the tooth out for him and uh, basically gives him some some lessons, some childhood lessons about like, you know, being prepared for the worst and all that stuff. Yeah, totally off topic. Beast Wars is awesome. And it was also the same time I used to watch uh, like reruns of uh, Gargoyles and all those cool ass uh, cartoons from back in the day. They were pretty awesome. This is mm-hmm. great, though. This is like your world, huh? The world you won't let me in. You refuse to. You, you're the gatekeeper <laughs> and you won't let me into your Dungeons and Dragons world. You're, you're gatekeeping me. Yeah. That's what that yeah, looks like to me. Huge. Look how small they all down here, though. Look at that. That's a cool ass. I like the scale. It's a great. It, I I didn't see who the art. I didn't take a look to see who the artist was for this one because it was just kind of. It was interesting to see it, and yeah. um, I like how he didn't give him any advice. He just says, "Go bring me a, to- a tooth back." What? Bring me a tooth. Back. And he just says, "Go." Like he doesn't even say, "Okay, this is what you do." Listen, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. No, he just says, "Go." Like that's pretty awesome. Hmm. Uh, and then for issue two, so basically Django has to go assassinate someone and it ends up being revealed that it's a clone of him as well, like an accelerated clone. And nice. he, he, feel, he feels fucked up about it. And I, whoop, he feels messed up about it. <laughs> fine. That's fine. Uh, basically about it. And, uh, you know, he, he, I like how he like takes him. He, put, he puts him under his arm and jetpacks off with it. And he's like, he's, he's contemplating life. He tells him about like, oh, you know, some days are worse than others doing this job. He's like, you know what, though? You can drive us home. And he's like, oh, thanks. Thanks, Dad. I can't wait to drive. I can't wait to drive the slave one home. And then. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice job on the, uh, on the accent. Um, thanks, Dad. And it's thanks, not. Uh, I can't wait to drive the slave one home. It's not, it's not slave one. It's a uh, spaceship. Four or whatever. Oh, fire it spray. It's the fire spray. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. It's not. It's not uh, slave no. one. Take it easy. You know, Django, hundred percent calling the slave one. He don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and every thing in here, it's gonna say it, but like that's not what it's called. Um, uh, and oh. then after that panel is the is like so it's Boba thinking about like his past. He's like, oh, this monster killed my. He's like, he's this monster. This t-. he's like, it was he's like treating Wendu as the worst person to ever exist in the galaxy, which. As far as we've learned from all the Jedi stuff, possibly yes. Yeah. Um, from, but, from what Disney has done to some of these things, yeah, yeah, no, he might have been the bad guy in the situation. Actually, yeah. although he looks um, real cool, <laughs> he looks real cool, kind of. So yeah, and then you have that great panel there at the bottom where it's him holding the helmet, uh, and then it transitioning to the second half of this comic book where it it's Boba Fett as an adult doing missions. That's pretty cool, especially for a comic. Book. That's pretty cool. But this was taken from me. I've grown since then. The man who killed my father is long gone. But my anger remains, and it's him about to put on the Boba Fett helmet. That's pretty cool. They did a good job with that. Mm-hmm. I am curious about the helmet now. Now it bothers me because I never really like thought about the whole why there are two helmets or what happened to the original one. Now that kind yeah, of how they blow away? It's, and and uh, it's so weird. This is the canon. Uh, this is the first canon appearance of young Boba Fett, and it's actually so it's the Jungle Fett story where he takes this. He's like. <laughs> just both are walking up. Hi, straight out, straight out of the Omega kind of thing. Um, he said something's following you. <laughs> something's following you there. And 
Yeah, yeah, it's my son. Yeah, this is my son Boba. He's coming. He's he's gonna learn how to do the job today. Take your son to work day. And this isn't a problem with you guys, is it? They're like, no, 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 not a problem at all. Um, I actually have this one though. I have, this is I have this one. They do their job. Yeah, that's a good one though. They do their job and all that stuff. And at the end, uh oh, what happens? They try and betray them. Except the Rodian. The Rodian's like, "Are you guys nuts? This is the stupidest thing we could have ever done in our lives. Why are you doing this?" So the they hold a, a Boba hostage, tell Django you give up the girl and all that. And he's just like, no. And I, what do you mean no? He goes, hey, the Christopher Walken, like, I just said no. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Boba just blasts the guy and flips him over. And he's like, you should check me first before you grab me. <laughs> See, I don't have any blaster on me. Kind of makes me wonder uh, they, if, they, if, uh, they, if Django put those huh? seeds of... Uh... The test them again. It kind of makes you wonder, like, was that something they just did, or did he like maybe um, put some put put a little ear, put a little bug in their ear, and be like, hey, you could probably just you know take it, take this whole thing by yourself, and just to test his son, put his son in in a a situation where they got the swords to his throat and say, yeah, get out of it. I don't like the tooth. Bring me his head, and then just walks away. (laughs) Walk away and let it happen. Yes, after that moment, uh, basically they kill everyone except the Rodian, and Django's like, hey, it's up to you. If you want to kill him, it's up to you. And then he lets him live, and yeah, and then Django is like, so why'd you let him live? And he's like, oh, so he can, like, so he can tell others about what happened, not to mess with Django. And he, he's like, oh. You gotta, you gotta leave one alive so they can tell the story, son. You always gotta leave one alive. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Growth is accurate. And then that is the first cover appearance of a young Boba Fett, which is on the Dr. Afra 13 is the anniversary variant. It's funny Very seeing nice. Django so like color coordinated. So awesome. Cause now that we've had like the book of Boba and we've had all the Mandalorian stuff. I mean, it is a good chance he might have a red helmet and purple chest and a green like boot or something. And it's like, he has, he he's has chrome very... now. He's got all the chrome. He's got the <laughs> blue underneath, the purple underneath. Sorry, and then the blue in the visor. And then we got some figures for young... <laughs> Django. Trauma equals growth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can't hate if you have nothing to hate, son. You gotta let that that hate get into you. You gotta let it feed you. Figures and toys. He actually has one. Uh, what do you mean has one? He has multiple. He has. No. So this is serious? the original Attack of the Saga series for the Attack of the Clones. It comes with the helmet, uh, jet, uh, but yeah, helmet, jetpack, the dual blasters for his father sir, as well. And, sir, uh, is that helmet there to put on him, or is that helmet there? Because that's his dad's head. What What is that uh, helmet both, there for? Both. <laughs> that's crazy that's way too big <clears throat> i didn't know about this so he has that was his clone so he has two clone wars figures that's on gonna the be expensive the right there clone clone wars. Wars, uh set one it looks great like the model is terrific that's and uh, so everything's great about it and on the right is a toys r us exclusive i couldn't find the box art for it but it's the him and the kaminoan outfit um from the from that episode um i couldn't find box art anywhere of it which is weird it must have been hard it must have been uh like no one really bought it or it's like very limited which i don't know why no one would have bought that I mean. <laughs> so i have a few here one is 64 30 for inbox and 30 dollars for out of box for the toys r us one no for that the, the clone wars one the normal one. Oh, for the other one yeah that's not surprising Mm, if we could all just have the bank account of the Voodoo Lily, we could buy these things at will. Hey, if you go to that shop, they may have it. <laughs> they will, probably. And no, I'm not paying that for it. Now, we got Lego. He has, he actually has a couple different Lego, but I'm going to burn up the two. Uh, this was the Jango Fed Slave one, uh, and that's his first figure. It's back when they still were doing yellow figures because it was 2002. And uh, yeah, that, that's pretty good, accurate like likeness, right? So if I if you didn't know that exists and I hand that to you, you know who that is? <laughs> because but, I played Lego Star Wars so much as a kid, yes. 
As an average person, I'd probably be like, what is this this halfling you gave me for yeah, this hobbit? Uh, is that is that a girl? Is that a boy? Is that like a, a knight of the round table? I have no idea what that is. Still awesome though. But look now, at old, look at that old school slave one though. Like that uh, the, that's one of everyone's favorites. They never really made Django Fett slave ones really much after. That's pretty cool. So it's gorgeous. And I like how it's old enough where it's still like you can see the Legos like exposed because now they like uh, hide everything. everything. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of like that. And then the follow up that one. Uh, this is the most recent one they did. It was the <laughs> Jedi Starfighter Harboring. The Obi Wan that. And it came with Django and Boba. And that is an angry, happy face. I was about to say, (laughs) look at that smirk. Oh, my God. (laughs) That's how we got him, Dad. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm a fan of that smirk. That's great. The little evil grin. Mm -hmm. Uh Uh-oh. Is that it? Yeah. And that would be it. There's no, there's no hot toy of young Boba Fett. I'm sorry. I can't show that in there. Outrageous. All right, that's it. I want to thank everybody for joining. And by everyone, I do mean Voodoo Lily. And we will catch you guys <laughs> next time. If you want to watch this, all you have to do is... Uh, what do you have to do? Sub up, like, follow <laughs> on YouTube so you can watch part one, part two, part three. If you want to see us do this live so you can join on in the discussion, always follow Mr. Girl on Twitch. And we'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for hanging out.